So I guess with that, let's hear something off the new record. You talked a little about yeah. before you hit play about just the sheer volume of layers you can put in with your current kind of production style. Yeah. So let's play something and have you dissect a little bit of like kind of what's going on. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, you know, before I, before I play any of it, I mean, I just say that. Um, before you guys. <laughs> I just say that. After the break. We'll yeah. Be back. <laughs> I mean, I you know I do I don't know how many how many tracks there are. I mean, it's fifty one tracks on on this piece, and and the way that I tend to um, I tend to mix things. So I've just re very recently I've just decommissioned my thirty two channel analog board, and I decided I'd have I have a redo of the studio, and I thought okay, anything that's sitting here, these keyboards, outboard, anything I I'm not really using, I haven't used for a year, I'll put to one side, and I kind of stripped it all down. And this is pretty much what I was left with. Mm. So, um, so I just thought I'd, you know, I'd start so rolling. Studio with yeah, you. it's nice. a great little studio, and I, and I can I can work on planes, and I've got some nice headphones that yeah. are very detailed and stuff. But I tend to, um, you know, I tend to subgroup. Um, everything goes down into so it's a bit old school in a way, in that I have all these different um, audio buses. Got it. Um, but it just makes it it makes it easy to almost have a kind of sub mix. Mm -hmm. um, so you can. Adjust things on the fly quickly. Without yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, you know, and I tend to with all of these channels, I tend to um, I tend to mix them usually at about min minus eight. So I've got plenty of headroom going into the um, going into the master chain. Where do you put this brick wall of which you speak? <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, yeah, the master chain. I mean, it it it, it kind of depends on the track really. Um, but I, I a lot of the um, you know, I've 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 got lots of memories over the years of going to have my own music mastered, and um, ultimately, you know, a, a, a well-produced record. The, the the main thing that they're doing for you is they're just making it sound a little bit louder and putting it through some higher-end processes that you you know even the the plugins can't touch. So, so a huge amount of work goes into these tracks with EQ from my end, just making sure each. Each component part has no tiny spikes. And, and are you mostly subtractive with your EQ? We've heard a lot. From entirely people. subtractive. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I very, very rarely add anything. Um, if I do, then it's a very, very broad curve and you know a huge bell curve just to warm something or make something slightly more aggressive. But yeah, it's and it's amazing once you get it, particularly when you get into live instrumentation and the, the vocals, you get these incredible spikes just happening over a, a tiny amount of um you know eq and um and and when you start kind of taking those out and smoothing the sounds it's a, it's a, it's amazing it's amazing how much more range and level you can actually get out of the tracks so for sure um, so what's this one called uh this uh this is called afterglow cool. um this is one of the tracks off the album and i've actually uh this is one of the few but this isn't the chameleon one okay, okay. <laughs> i'll that play that as well yeah good um but this is uh do you, do you want to listen to it off off the ableton File or yeah, um, if it's fairly mixed down, well, you can kind of like open stuff up while we go. Yeah, it should be.
All right, so that's brilliant. I love oh, thank it. you. Um, and I mean, we were talking about this earlier before cameras were running, but I feel like you you're so matured and like your your harmonic expression, your melody, your sense of melody, and it's all just very grown up yeah oh, thank you you yeah. know what i mean like as yeah, opposed I mean, to like the bangers of of well, yesteryear uh, you know it's I, i've done those and and i well. you know and I've, I've i've enjoyed doing them and um you know and, and there's there's no i mean there are one or two kind of bangers on this album or relatively speaking um <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but they're that you know they're not they're not sort of you know, there's nothing that's kind of particularly um from that same palette of sounds that maybe people have known the Elite Force or Zodiac Cartel stuff or, or you know, maybe more the Lunatic Calm stuff actually, more the, you know, um, the vocal bits and pieces. And actually with the Elite Force albums over the years, when I have done artist albums, they have, they've tended to have quite a lot of downbeat moments on them and they've been more expansive. So I've always seen albums as a chance for... It's a bit like the one series. It's an artist. It's their chance to write a book and to tell a bigger story mm -hmm. and to um, capture a moment in that you know in their careers. And th this is kind of where I'm at at the moment. So and clearly, with your background in classical, you know, music, you've got so much to draw on. Well, you know, it's yeah. semi-complex harmonies, and yeah. you don't want to lose people. And yeah, I mean, I'll play a track in a minute if you want. I like one of the slower tracks that's actually got 24 track vocal harmony on it, which again, you know, I've, I've all of the vocals have been done by me. So that was um, you. Uh, that yeah. was me on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of the guitars have been done by me as well. And I don't play the guitar at all, but that's where the technology comes in. I, I mean, I know, you know, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big fan of guitar music, but I've always been. You know, I, I've been. You know, people like um, Sonic Youth and Swans and those mm. kind, of, kind of late late eighties, early nineties, like really um, sort of just interesting. Uh, other bands that really interest, influenced me back then were people like Spaceman Three and Loop, and you know, just bands that kind of in the same way that techno has layers and it. That, you know, bands kind of doing that kind of stuff like very heavy shoegazy stuff or even even bands like Korn, you know, just the kind of production technique and just that kind of wall of sound. But when you think it's as big as it can be, another layer of guitar <laughs> comes on top. And I kind of love that as well. So it's been really fun. It, w what's been great is just giving free reign to your creativity and not worrying about what people think, and not worrying about the dance floor and how many units you're going to shift because nobody sells any units anyway anymore. Mm -hmm. So, it, and that's, in a way, that's quite liberating, you know, it's, um, I don't want to, I don't want to chase the same, the same kind of carrot that Steve Aoki chases on Beatport, for example, that's just right. not my game, so, you know. So talk about the melody in this, mm -hmm. like, the melody itself, the the little, you, you know the one, yeah, there's yeah. several melodies, yeah, obviously, yeah, but the yeah. one that I was like, ooh, that yeah. one, right? The synth I, one, yeah. Yeah, the synthy one, I love the, it's very sparse, and the, and the, Sonically, it's it's just it's gorgeous. So talk a little bit about the sound design. How you I don't know, this, some of these are balanced, so some of them you're not going to have necessarily all your plugins. Hoping that's a track that uh, we've yeah. got some stuff to yeah, look at. Yeah, I mean this is this t you know, this does tend to be um, a lot of these have been um, balanced balanced right. down. Although there is some demo. some diva stuff here, I think, which um, which we might be able to have a look at. So um, wistful acid. <laughs> But I, I mean, this you know, as, as far as plugins goes, this is this is one that I should have had a you know, keyboard for you, huh? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. I'm not about to reprise my my failed classical career, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> you made me snort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so the, I mean, the the, the uh, if we just look at the MIDI parts, I mean, they they're all. Um, all kind of re like relatively relatively complicated harmonically actually right. and 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 for me the the biggest um the biggest issue with this was finding finding the space to to place the notes it was all very kind of very specifically I, you know i didn't want to over clutter the space i didn't want to get too full on i wanted everything to have that sort of feel of syncopation um so, so the you know the placement. Um, so maybe solo that out and play that. Yeah, let me just try and play this diva part. So here we have what well, basically a just a dry and a and a wet version. 
so that that you know that's just that's just given me a lot of opportunity to side chain um, the effects specifically, and then and then there's a, a very sharp um, kind of EQ curve in there just to make sure that there's none of this kind of garbage down here, none of the you know the muddiness that's um, that's likely to afflict a kind of effects return. And it's it you know a lot a, a lot of the production on this. Um, on this record's been very, very specific, you know, because it's actually got a very warm kind of bass to it. And it is actually, other than the kick drum, it's providing the main kind of drive um, to the track bass wise. So, um, so I think if there's anything else in that part, and then I think they. Yeah, so I mean, the. So the compressor is just, um, it's pretty harsh on this actually, and it's um, the threshold's way up there at, at minus 17, but it's, um, you know, it's taking an awful lot of draw um, away from away from the, the kind of bottom end of that sound, so it just cleans it up a bit. So that's the Diva synth. What are some of your other go-to synths, like in this kind of current realm that you're sitting in, not your old school stuff, but... Um, I, I, I like um, I like amber. Um, you know, I've been using amber quite a lot for those almost sort of Selena style, you know, old school '70s synth sounds. Play a bit of that, just, um, just so people know. That's a really nice thin um, kind of metallic. Um, very old school. And then... So, within the track... So actually, those incredibly thin synth sounds—they actually sit in, you know, a lot of the time pads are, um, are just incredibly harmonically rich, and they're smothered in effects as well. And I tend to go for almost completely dry pad sounds, and then and then use the, um, you know, use the effects buses on here just to con control, um, you know, almost always use lexicon um, reverbs, which just find to be a, a really, you know, a very, very natural sound and they tend to fit in well. But it's really interesting with something like that, just how um, how fine and thin you can get away with the sound when there's so much rich content going on elsewhere. And it's very, I think it's very easy to sonically just over, over clutter stuff. So I was very, um, very precise with this track to try and avoid that, you know, so. Dave Smith was just here a week ago talking about analog synthesis, and obviously he's made a career out of the, building these amazing boards. And he kind of chuckled, but he's like, you know, your first ten patches are those huge yeah. people in the keyboard shop That's it. pushing those ten, That's and it. they're the biggest, yeah. most robust, crazy. He's like, but yeah. you're like, you're. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but essentially saying like, nobody puts those on a record. It's impossible they're, because yeah. they, there's nothing left. There's no yeah. more space anywhere, right? But that's, so uh, yeah, no, that's exactly right. what you're yeah. talking about. The opposite of that of just taking something. Well, no, and that's fine yeah. Detail. I mean, I, I used to find that really frustrating with um, with keyboards. That um, you know, I was stuck with. A, I had a Roland D50 for years, a workstation, and and I knew everything that that keyboard could do. I mean, literally, because I had no money to buy anything else. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it it was designed to. It was designed to do everything in the shop. So if you wanted to hear a slap bass, you'd kind of do this crappy emulation of a slap bass would come out, you know. But it, it you know, and like you say, the demo patches were just so full of stuff. The minute, you, the minute, I mean, you know, what, I think what, what a lot of the time, what, what people don't kind of maybe get with with reverb is rev what, what reverb tends to do is it tends to locate a track. So if you're in a band and you're in a room that has a certain acoustic, Everything that's playing is going to sound like that room. So you see a live band and it all sounds like it belongs in the same place because it does. If you're making an electronic bit of music and you have 15 different reverbs, you've made a mess of it because mm -hmm. ultimately it, the, the ear is just confused by what's going on. So, I mean, you know, you could maybe take three or four different iterations of a, of a lexicon reverb, but you need to make sure that it's 
you know it's coming from the same family and maybe you, you know the 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 version that you have on a on a on a clap or a snare drum may be dialed right back from what you have on a pad but ultimately it's coming from that same kind of sonic family and and um and that that's you know that's a that's a definite tip to how you how you can actually bind a track together and also where you know a lot of sample packs as well that i hear you know you have these just insane amounts of effects on everything it's like what are you meant to do with it other than put a kick drum under it and sell it in the tech house section i mean <laughs> that's it really so back to this reverb notion because this is a really nice idea mm. do you do that all through d separate discrete reverbs on each channel do you put one on a bus for all of your pads uh, like how do you yeah set up? I, I mean i tend to um i tend to use i mean i've got i've got on this i think i use three there are three different reverbs, and what I've done on this track is um, bounce them all down. Okay. So um, I, it for doesn't CPU. make it for CPU. I mean, these are all kind of mastered versions of tracks, but they, you know, they do tend to, um, you know, I tend to use them for for different purposes. So um, let's just try this one here. Do you want to listen to just the reverbs? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Again, quite strongly side chains. We've got something that's a much thinner version of the same thing, basically, with um, a, a little bit of percussion and some of the reverse sweeps and stuff like that in there. So it's almost giving you a shimmering top end without you having to add percussion to make that happen, without having to add the actual. Um, you know, because the, the, a, lo a lot of the time is the, the frequencies, particularly in drums. You know, the frequencies are there. You only have to look at an EQ curve to see how much frequency is there. You don't necessarily need that fifteenth percussion line doing so and so to have the same effect. You know, you can use reverb to give to give almost like a sonic shelf that sits at the top mm. of the of the mix. You know, and there's, there's all sorts of ways you can do you, you can do that. So I and are you, you know, doing all the EQ on your reverb? Pre-send. Yeah. So I would I would have it. I would have the the reverb would, would be um, uh, the uh, the EQ would be on on the on the bus. On the, yeah, right. on the bus on cool. the send. And just purely because I've printed it in this instance, it's right. um, um, you know, again for CPU, it's uh, basically with this. You know, I've got I've got the mix down pretty much as I want it before I've gone anywhere near. You know, I wouldn't print anything unless I was pretty certain I had sure. it how I wanted it. So it's. Um, and then well, let's actually, move on to something else. Then. This, yeah. is, this is this is cool.